Hello, everyone, and you're so much welcome to today's tutorial. And I still remain your shoe making made easy tutor Oju Role Mojibola. And today I am going to be explaining to us how I created this gladiator, or if you want to call it a strappy heel sander, how I actually transformed the one into what I have here. Now, if you're watching my channel for the first time, make sure you subscribe to my channel, press the notification bell so that each time I upload a video, you will be notified. Sit back, and I'm gonna be right back. So, the first thing we're gonna be doing is we are going to actually be cleaning all of this up. Now, I know it might seem a bit difficult if you are actually revamping a particular shoe and transforming it into a beautiful design like what we have so what you are going to do first is all of these if you want to remove them easily it can be a bit difficult just get to your burner and then you know try to heat it up immediately you do so by the time you scrape it it will open easily all of these all of these ones they will you will be able to scrape them easily so i need you to do that so you can just see the sample of how you're going to do it just look at this and see it so after all of the heating you can see i decide to take my time to scrape it you can make use of a sandpaper to tidy it up you can see the way it's looking now you can also use a grinding stone you can use your grinding machine to actually do that as well so i've already taught us how to wrap our insole so we are just going to go majorly into our hopper is actually a beautiful heel strappy sander so we are going to just go right into the process of putting the straps together and how to measure what you should use as your pattern and how to go about each and every one of them so before we proceed into our upper i want you to know that i'm not going to be leaving the edges or the side this way we need to give it some cleaning and make it look new don't forget that the fact that we are revamping doesn't mean that the sole should still be so untidy and unkept so let me show you the process with which i tidy up my sole. so i want you to assume that somebody actually gave you this to repair so when you are doing that make sure that you don't just repair the upper you take good care of also the soul that was brought for you to actually use for them so let's continue so get some liquid soap and clean all of this up clean all of this up and allow it to dry all the dusty parts clean it up So the next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be dyeing it with my black leather dye. It's actually a leather dye, but I'm going to be using it for the edge. I find out that it works perfectly well for our edges like this. So I've already soaked it and then your dye. Don't forget to always cover it up or else it will dry up because most of them are alcohol based dye so it will just evaporate and dry also you can see see now the look is totally different from what we had when we started you can see that it's it's quite difficult to be able to you know identify with the fact that it's actually an whole soul that you are actually using or i am using for this particular tutorial so i am just going to sun dry it and then um, apply once again yes i can decide to apply once again i can decide not to apply once again it depends on how your look how the look of your of the soul look like if it has actually wear out a lot you might have to apply twice if it's not much you can just apply once like what i have here is looking quite good but i don't mind actually 
applying one once again so it will just be twice and my sew will be looking new and clean i hope you get that so let me go ahead and sun dry then finish that up so for our pattern cutting i'm going to be using my foot as a mold for you to be able to know what measurements you should use so in case you are making it for yourself at home and you want to know what kind how to go about what length to actually cut out this is quite simple so now i've already wrapped my in so this is my sew you understand so let's first of all go with the strap don't forget that we have like five straps so the first one is going to be here it's going to be here the width can be the width of this particular this particular measuring tip so i have about one i love to have about one to one and a half inch on there so it depends on you i love to have enough so that i won't be struggling with when it's small so i have this because it has to cover this way permit me to we are just doing a rough sketch don't don't forget so i find that that the first one is about seven and a half or eight as the case may be 7.5 inch so now the next one is going to be here the next one is going to be around here so I'm just going to pick it up again. That is about 10 inch. The next one will be here. I'm just trying to follow my feet. You know, all of them have different circumference. So from what I have here, let's check. I think this is still about 10 as well. 10 inch so for the third one don't forget that we have a back pattern now for the back pattern i have already taught us how to create this particular kind of back pattern that looks like this so you can let me know in the comment section if you are not sure of how to locate the video i will send you the link and i will also try as much as possible to put in the comment section and in the description but in case i didn't please remind me and i will sure do that for you so you know it's going to be at the back right here this is going to be at the back right here so i'm just trying to so it's going to be at the back right here so the length i need for that particular side i'm sure you know it's going to come from here it's going to be inserted to this place it's coming to the other end of my foot and i'm going to be using nine inches for that nine inches then i have another one that is going to be at my ankle so for that you have to make sure that you roll that all around don't forget that you are going to be fixing your buckle so you are going to be fixing your buckle right here so you have to fold this fold about one inch to fix your buckle then the remaining one would be will overlap it this way so you have this at the side so it means I have, I need like 13 inch long or 12. It depends on you. So I'm going to be picking 13 or 12. So, so if we are staying in between, in between, we are picking 12.5 of an inch for this ankle strap. So I think we know all of the lengths that we need now. So we can go ahead and cut our straight strap. So I will, I will link, I will send the link for the back pattern so that you can see it. Now for the center pattern. Before we progress with our heel sander, I need to inform you that on the 7th to 12th of February, I am going to be having a week exclusive course on how to create moves. We are going to be looking at from how to actually create the design. I'm going to be showing you how to create it with free hands and also how to use a three-dimensional form. I'm going to be teaching us how to create the upper, the processes you can use to actually create your upper and it will be neatly finished. Now, I need you to know that when it comes to this mold, we are going to be looking at at least three different kind of styles. Yes, we are going to be looking at different, three different at least. And then we are also going to be looking at main form. So many people have asked me about the basic shoe pattern. So I'm going to be trying to show you how you can create a basic shoe pattern in this particular video. Now, another extra thing, which is a bonus course, I'm going to be adding to this. How do I achieve a neat finish? So many people have told me, oh, I love your footwear. It's always looking like an already made footwear. 
everywhere yes i'm going to be showing you the little tricks that i use to achieve that beautiful and unique look look i'm sure you don't want to miss that i've already in my last tutorial i in my last tutorial yes i already gave out like 50 percent discount for the first 10 people that have registered so for this particular video i will be giving us such offer as well please it's not going to be more than 10 percent 10 people just 10 people if you are interested let me know in the comment section make sure that you make your payments as long as soon as we attend i am i am already done so i need you to maximize the offer please if you're a beginner is suitable i am going through every of the of the of the classes step by step so whether you're a beginner or you are not it's actually a course you can go for trust me if it's not i will let you know so let's go right into our heel sandals <laughs> i'm going to suggest you do it this way place your insole right on top like this before you know what that will be now one of the reasons why i want you to do this is because by the time you start wearing this you find that as some of this kind of um you know heel sander that has this kind of center pattern the center straight pattern used to fold when people walk i don't know if you have noticed it some of them tend to be too long so they fold off so with this you can be able to know what it will look like when you are standing so let's say we are starting from here don't forget that we are coming this way so it's going to be stopping at my ankle you can see where my ankle is it's going to be around here around this place so i'm having about six quarter to six inch right here so for me i'm going to be cutting out a length of either six inch or six quarter of an inch i think that's fine but if you just want to have a little excess up you can just have like you know six and a half inches so with your six and a half inch you can have half of an inch free here before you insert your strap for strap and then half of an inch right here hop here extra before you insert the fifth strap that is also at the ankle so i think six and a half should be quite fine for me you can see i wouldn't want it folding i wouldn't want it folding at all so when i walk it will still be intact that straight line will still be there so i hope you get that about our pattern cutting now it's easier for you to use your foot just because you are the owner so if you are not the owner i'm going to suggest you make use of a last or if you have been doing this over and over probably you are not a beginner you might not know how to use your foot for another person's size but if you understand how to go about it i tell you you can actually use your foot to also create that those are the things i teach in my classes so i would suggest you check my course out on my beginners course out and see how you can achieve all of those things on my subscription so now i have all of my straps cut out the center is about two and a half centimeter wide which is also equivalent to one inch so i have this to be 1.5 centimeter 1.5 centimeter this is actually not as much as a 0 0.5 of an inch i think it's a bit just a bit higher than a 0 0.5 of an inch because one, one inch is actually 2.5 and then um, half of an inch is 1.25 centimeter i mean in centimeter so it's a bit wider than 0 0.5 inch is a bit wider than 0 0.5 inch but this is 1.5 centimeter if you are working in centimeter is 1.5 and this is 2.5 in centimeter you don't want yours to be as wide as this you can decide to make it smaller it's fine then for the buckle i've taught us severally how to fix our buckle the the one at the ankle this is what i have i told us we are using 12.5 as the length so inch length long so I already applied my contact adhesive. We folded one inch. If you remember when we were, we were trying to fix the um, check the length, we folded one inch before we now check what the full length is. So I have already inserted my buckle at that one inch, applied my contact cement adhesive. I'm doing this for the sake who are watching for the sake of those watching my channel for the first time. And if you are actually watching for the first time, I want you to go ahead and click the subscribe button so that each time I upload a video, you will be notified. You can see what is happening here. After I placed it down, what I find that is a bit wider. So it's expedient that you reduce it. Probably while I was cutting, I didn't cut perfectly straight. So one side is wider. So you can see I just trimmed that half. So 
you can see what i have now by the time i have done all of that because for me it's important as long as you are going to stitch you have to go through this process if you don't want to stitch yours it means you have to line in line it first before you finally fix your buckle you have to line first when you finish lining it let's assume you have actually added your lining here then you can put your one inch fold it this way and use rivet to hold it down you use your rivet to hold it down and that's all if you are not going to be stitching it's actually possible for you to create this design this beautiful we can call it a gladiator design you can call it a strappy sander it looks like a gladiator because it has a lot of steps like that and a lot of straps so you can actually do this without stitching you can do this without stitching so that's how you fix the buckle if you are not going to be stitching now for the second buckle you know there is actually a buckle that is attached to our back pattern you remember we measured that as well we measured the length so for that buckle you are going to do this and attach it to the back pattern so for my back pattern i told us i've already taught us how to create that so don't forget that if you are fixing your back pattern like this so this will be here so if you are going to line it definitely it's going to be inside and you are going to cover it up with your lining and stitch it out if you don't want to stitch if you don't want to stitch first of all line the whole of this attach your lining then you go ahead and use your rivet to hold this down here and before you know it you are good to go so i'm just giving us a general view of what will be happening in this particular video so you can see what we are going to be having so let's quickly go ahead i'm going to go ahead and line all of them now i have a video on how you can actually line your upper in different ways what we are creating is what we call the upper so that is the first thing the next thing we are going to actually be doing now so we have our buckles intact we have our straps also available we are just going to go ahead and line it now it's not compulsory that you have to line with the same lining some prefer to do like that but for me i don't think it's actually a crime if you don't want to use the same color of your leather well it's fine just make sure you are using a cool and beautiful color so i think that's it so as you can see i've already um line my upper you can see what i have now i need to show you something you can see i line it with a totally neutral you know color so but what i did to the one at the middle the pattern at the middle i use the same black now the reason is because by the time i open it up i don't want it to be having that white i'm sure you know by the time i insert my strap i don't want to be seeing that white although if you are going to actually be using a neutral color such as this also for your center you will have to actually get a black dye to first of all dye that part so that it will be black and it will not be showing that white you know that nude um color by the time you insert the leather strap so you can see what i have now i want you to know that one of those things you can do for this kind of a design on the edge is to just decide to coat it you can decide to coat it for it to have a beautiful finish and then um, i have a course on how to actually create edge coats as you can see them in different colors you can actually make this yourself and use for your for your for your straps for your bags so i have a course on how to create this i want you to check the under the description on description of the of this video and then you know get yourself acquainted with the course i think the course is about three dollars so just check it out check the link out and see how you can order for your own how you can order for the course on how to do it i mean diy edge code you can see that i have them in different colors it's not just black i have them in different colors so you can you can actually have any color you like any color any color of your choice so let's quickly go ahead now if you don't want to edge coat it and then at the same time you want to ensure that by the time you are holding your pattern they are not seeing the edges this is how you should cut it because of the nude color you use normally if i actually use the same leather all i need to do is to keep my scissors at angle right angle to the edge of my strap but now that i am actually let's say i am not going to be you know coating the edge with a black edge coat i'm just going to try to slant it to about um 
75 or 45 degree it depends on what you want to call it. this is about 45 degree so i am going to totally bend it you can see the way it is not like this i am bending it this way so that is the way i'm going to cut what i have on that so at the end of the day it will not be easy for anyone to really see it see that oh she used a nude color i mean at the edge You can see that normally if you look at it like this, you are not seeing anything. See, I want you to see something. You will find out that what you are seeing is the black. You can see that you are seeing the black. You are seeing the black, but the time you look at it, you understand. So no one will actually be seeing that until, you know, they look into your sander intently. I hope you get what I'm actually trying to say from here. So all you need to do is just to cut that way. If you cut it straight, of course, definitely they will be seeing it. I mean, if you place your scissors at right angle like this, it's easy for somebody to see it. You can see it's very easy. Even if you look at it this way, you can see that you are still seeing the white, the nude, the neutral leather. You are still seeing it. I'm sure you can see that this is, you can see that you are, you are not seeing the black like you are seeing on this other side. I don't know if you can get what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I hope you get that. So I'm just going to go back to my slant just do that do that so if you are into you love to coat your edges i think this is actually a good course you should actually try to order for in naira it's about 1500 naira for on how to do it you do it yourself everything you need is what i have explained in that particular course so please get it